Help Desk YouTube video series. I'm Big J. I'm Little J. And today we're going to talk about the CBA, okay, the shoulder, okay, more um, closely looking at a shoulder that's flaccid, okay, and what things we have to remember when it comes to our intervention process. So we'll combine a lot of the, um, the variables, if you will, client factor elements, okay? Um, you know, with scapular humor rhythm and what the OT should be doing, okay? To protect a shoulder. So, um, so we're going to just move right into that. And, uh, and we hope you, uh, we hope you enjoy. Oh, Mr. Ryan, what? Why is your arm hanging down? You don't want your arm hanging down, my friend. That's not good. It's not good at all. Okay, so you walk into a patient's room and the first thing you see is that their arm is hanging out of bed. Don't be surprised because it happens quite often. And then all of a sudden you understand now why a hand would be swollen up like a balloon. All right, takes maybe five minutes to do some retrograde massage and pump it down and you can get the hand back to normal. Okay, but if it stays down too long, okay, you'll end up having a problem. All right, so when I walk into a patient's room and I'm going to be looking at, okay, the shoulder, a CVA, in this particular case, okay, I immediately begin to think about range of motion. And uh, if I'm now, you know, we already did range of motion. I know his left side is working and I know his right side was flaccid somewhat initially. Um, it's a few days later, okay, and what's happening is, is he might be starting to get something back. Okay, the very first thing that I do, okay, is I begin the process of looking at his scapula. The scapula, okay, now this is the, this is the scapula right here. Okay, and the head of the humerus sits up inside. And we know that the ratio is one to two. For every movement that, that the humerus makes, okay, in two, the scapula makes one. So we know that 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees is the scapula in the three different movements because it doesn't move from zero to 30 degrees. So zero to 30 degrees right here, if I turn to the side, you can see zero to 30 degrees, the scapula now begins to move. And as the scapula moves, okay, when you get here, what has to happen is the head has to rotate down under so that the humerus can then come up without hitting the acromion process. I explain that to families just the way I explained it to you right now. Because quite frankly, when people understand it, they understand and they start to protect. I love to protect. You're protecting my shoulder. I tell every family, you got to take care of my shoulder, okay? Because at the end of the day, if we let people, other people move him around and do things to that shoulder, it's going to have a problem. So I put everybody on high alert, uh, you know, got to have it up, got to have it on a pillow, got to make sure it's not hanging down. And believe me, that you put them on high alert, you tell them that that arm's not going to come back. If you don't help take care of it, they'll be taking care of it. So the first thing that I like to do is, is I like to come up underneath. I'm holding right at the wrist here. Okay, I like to come up underneath by just scooping up under and I like to find the scapula. Okay, now my hands are on the tip of the scapula and you feel that Joseph, right? Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm at 30 degrees. So scapula didn't have to move. Okay, zero to 30 degrees, scapula didn't have to move. Now the scapula has to move. Okay, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna check to see if it's moving and it's not in our patient patient's case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the scapula forward. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull the head of the scapula towards me and I'm gonna move them and I'm gonna keep moving that scapula until I get them to 90 degrees. Once the scapula's at 90 degrees, it's moved out pretty much most of the way. The rest of the movement is all one unified movement above the head, okay? I don't like to go there. I like to take this and I like to move the scapula the way I'm moving it right now because I'm moving the scapula in and out and I'm doing range of motion. So I'm guaranteed, and also notice this, notice that I'm turning the arm. I'm externally rotating like I told you. So I'm gonna turn the arm, okay, as I come up, 
I'm gonna turn at the radius and the ulna and get that arm moving. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get them to 90 degrees each time and that's how I'm gonna work them. Now that's how I, I work with the scapula when they're in this position and I'm at bedside and I'm ranging. And again, I'm gonna show you another quick technique, only Joseph is going to switch arms for being a CVA because I can't work on that side right now. So if I was in a hospital bed, I'd go on the other side, but we're not in a hospital bed, obviously. So Joseph, turn on to your side right now, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come to the back of his arm and Joseph, just let me have, this is the arm that's affected. So I now have the back. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to, I'm gonna go, relax your arm, drop it, let me have it, good. Cause that's about what a CVA is gonna do. I would have his head laying down. So go down a little bit lower there, Joseph. So your head's down in the pillow. Cause I want him in a perfect position. Drop your arm now and let it go. Cause that's what's gonna happen. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find his scapula. I got it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pressure the scapula a little bit. I'm gonna push it in towards his body and I'm gonna take him. Remember, 30 degrees, scapula begins to move and I'm gonna move the scapula and I'm gonna put pressure on it, okay? And I'm gonna move it. You can see my hand moving closer and closer to me, okay? And scapula, drop your arm, Joseph, I got it. And I'm gonna move scapula. What I'm doing is, is mobilizing the scapula, putting pressure against it, okay? And then taking it through its motion. Initially with a CVA, if I do that, a lot of times what happens is, is it wakes up, okay? If it's on its way to coming back, okay, it'll wake up and we'll start to see a little bit of a difference, all right? Okay, Joseph, you can lay back around. So that's when I very first start with the shoulder, okay? The range of motion aspect of it. But again, we have to remember the elements of the shoulder. We have to remember scapular humeral rhythm, okay? And the one to two ratio, okay? But in the clinic, okay, we want to be thinking about what's happening to the head of the humerus so that we're not doing this, bam, right up inside. I start doing this, I start doing this with a shoulder and I'm not, and I'm doing range of motion. Oh, wow, this is great. Oh, that's wonderful. No, I'm not. What I'm doing is impinging the shoulder, not Joseph's, because he can do it. He has tone there, okay? But with CVA, I'm not going to find that. Let me show you something else. Okay, it's gonna be hard to see, okay? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fingers. I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna lay the arm down, I'm gonna come right off of the acromial process, and I'm gonna dip down and I'm gonna find the head of the humerus. When I find the head of the humerus, I'm gonna look to see how much the head of the humerus is hanging down, okay? Because I can literally stick two fingers in there, or about two fingers, when you have no tone or not enough tone. So that gives you an example of why you don't want the arm hanging down and why you want it up like on a, um, you know, on the table or on a lap tray. If the patient's in there, you don't want to hang it down because it's going to pull out of the socket. It's going to stretch everything and the individual is going to have trouble, you know, with, uh, with the arm at another time. So we have to really be cautious and careful uh, about a shoulder when it comes to the CVA. All right. Um, and, uh, you know, at, at this point, his arm may be starting to come back. We don't know, right? Okay, but taking care of the shoulder is critical, okay, with the CVA. So now, step back for a second and let's recap. Because what we, what we were able to accomplish here is thinking about the shoulder, okay, um, in relation to the CVA, identifying the fact that we have a shoulder that um, has, uh, you know, it's flaccid and the shoulder itself, okay, has to be protected. And we want to over how to position, okay, in supine. I'm a supiner, okay, and I only like to go to 90 initially, okay. And as we mentioned, we protect the shoulder by doing um, manual, okay, um, treatment in terms of the scapula. Oh. So, make sense? Makes sense. Anything you want to add to that? Uh, so the only thing I'd add is make sure you like and subscribe. Um, you know, contact us at OT Help Desk to see how you can potentially become a student liaison and get a free OT Help Desk membership. And we'll see you next time. All right. Take care.